Hello there. So I recently popped into a Lidl, basically because I wanted to buy something so that I didn't get a parking ticket. Um, so I rushed in, had a look around and thought, oh, there's the coffee I usually buy. You can probably guess where this is going. I sort of got closer, picked it up and thought, hang on a minute. This isn't the coffee I normally buy. This is why I was confused. This is the Nescafe. Obviously, it's bigger, so I'm not that stupid. They got the same sort of chromey uh, foil around them. The logo is, okay, it's a different shape, but it's dark. This color is the same as that color there. The lids are the same color. So you can see that from a distance, you sort of see that and think, oh yeah, that's the coffee I want, and you grab it. Well, anyway, I did grab it. I didn't buy it unintentionally. I'm not that stupid again, uh, but I thought I would buy it and compare it to this one. This was about two pounds. I should really put the prices on the screen now, the current prices, because I bought this at a different time, and I'll compare the same sizes as well. How much cheaper is this one? Now, you can put any coffee inside a fancy looking sort of tin, can't you? Well, I buy this one because, well, actually, I am a sort of pompous prat who likes fresh coffee. I've got my own uh, bean grinder that you can see there. I drink this because, well, not because it's a great substitute for that, but because it's easier than making a cup of coffee that way, and it tastes okay, and it's better than the sort of, have I got any in here? You know, the sort of standard freeze-dried thing you get, because if you haven't seen these coffees before, the texture of it, it's much more sort of powdery and smooth, so anyway, I'm going to compare these two now and we'll come to some kind of conclusion about whether or not, presumably, the money you save with that one is worth it. Okay, in terms of texture, um, yeah, it's actually almost indistinguishable. I think the granules might be slightly smoother in the Nescafe one. That's not actually a proper descriptive term, isn't it? I have just woken up. They're finer in that than they are in this. They look a little bit fluffy. Pull that out so the steam doesn't go up and set a light to the house. Can steam do that? I don't know. Oh, that's an unfortunate effect. I'm going to put a small touch, in fact, I'm just going to put a small touch of coffee in the sugar bugger, but um, I'm going to put a small touch of very crunchy sugar in each one. Before anybody complains about cross-contamination, grow up. Let's get some out-of-date milk from the fridge. Let's see what we've got in here let's have a look we've got chocolate milk i don't think that would go with it and we've got out of date cravendale milk we'll use that or beer we're gonna have some beer i suppose but you know out of date milk drink it until it smells like cottage cheese that is the motto of cravendale actually it's their um strap line we're getting there i think quiet boil you see i mean i'd have a loud boil if it just bloody well got on with boiling to be honest we're done right okay here we go boiled far too much water oh that's four cups that's four half cups i probably would have got away with two i don't know who understands that on a kettle really okay so this is the nescafe one yeah it's looking quite it's getting a sort of creamer or creamer however you pronounce it on top let's have a look at this doing with this with one hand which isn't ideal because you don't want to um, spill it and scold yourself do you let's stir this anyway you should stir it because you put sugar in it you want the sugar to be properly dispersed throughout the drink don't you I'm very excited because if this is indistinguishable or a good substitute I will just stop buying the Nescafe one I've got no loyalty to brands based on the fact it's a brand. But I suppose when I go to a supermarket, like a lot of people, I'm influenced by the brand. If I see the brand, I'm more likely to think it tastes better than the own brand. Okay, right, well, they look like coffee, don't they? They look exactly the same. I don't drink black coffee. 
I think it tastes like muck. So let's struggle to open this milk and get that in there. Right, okay. Let's smell it. Yeah, either I've lost my sense of smell or it smells fine. Let's pour a bit in there. Oh, beautiful. Let's put the lid back on the thimble full of milk in there and return that for another week. Okay, so let's, which one should I know what this tastes like, so I'll taste it as a sort of benchmark. This, oh, which I've just spilled all over the floor. Oh my God. This is the Nescafe. I'll try and make as much noise as possible. Right, let's get this down here. I'm stringing this out, obviously. Um, but, you know, house cleanliness comes first, I'm afraid. Okay, let's wipe it all off the cupboard. It's gone in all the crevices on the cupboard. That's good. It's gone on the skirting board. Yeah, okay. All in all, complete. And that's a failure. Right. Okay. Let's try it again. Right. Okay. My taste buds have adapted. So I've just had the Nescafe one again acclimatise myself to the flavour. Here we go. Okay, I'm going back to the Nescafe one before I give my judgement. I think I would really, really genuinely struggle to tell these apart if I was drinking the Nescafe one by mistake. They're identical. You can't tell them apart. Maybe an experienced taste tester could tell them apart. Something tells me there's like a sweeter note in the um, little one. But that could just be that I put a drop more sugar in because the coffee itself wouldn't be sweeter, would it? They look the same in terms of packaging and the actual coffee they produce. And to me, they are indistinguishable. I'll be buying that from now on. Um, anyway, let me know if you'd like me to do more comparisons between Lidl products or Aldi products or other supermarket products and their genuine, branded, expensive equivalents. Um, because that's something I'll be up, to do, up for doing. Because, you know, in these times, these financial times, it's good to cut back where you can. And, you know, that 20p could heat the house for three microseconds, couldn't it? You know, so... Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to my loyal patrons who are scrolling down the screen now, especially George Foot, Jim McKay, Jennifer Jones, and Rob Van Eden. And they're extremely generous patrons because they give me more than $5, so I say their names. And the other patrons, I just have them scrolling down the screen. You know, I'm good like that, and um, they're good too. They're better than me, probably. Anyway. Enough waffling. Thanks for watching. See you next time for another video.